Welcome viewers. In this video, I will show you some simple techniques to find moment of coplanar forces. I will also cover an important concept called principle of moments and solve a problem using this principle. Let us first take a quick review of basic concepts before we work out a problem. A force acting on a rigid body has a tendency to cause not only translation motion of the body but also rotational motion and therefore the moment of a force or torque is a measure of its tendency to cause the body to rotate about a specific point or axis. Here in this figure we have a, a rigid body which is acted upon by a force F and its moment about point O is defined as vector cross product of the position vector R and the force itself. The magnitude of this moment is equal to F R sin theta, where theta is the angle between the position vector and the force vector, and you can figure out that R sin theta is equal to D, which is the perpendicular distance from the point O to the line of action of the force F. Moment of a force is a vector, and its direction is along an axis that is normal to the plane containing the position vector and the force. There are two important points to be taken note of. The first is that the moment of a force depends on the magnitude of the force, which is quite evident from the equation m is equal to f times d. It is also dependent on the line of action. Farther the line of action for a force, larger would be its moment about the moment center. The second point is also quite important and what it says is that the moment does not depend upon the actual point of application of the force along its line of action. What it means is that the moment of a force with the point of application at point A is same as the moment of the force with its point of application at point B as shown in this figure. And the same is true for any other point along the line of action of the force. This is so because for each of the points along the line of action, the perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of the force remains the same. And therefore, irrespective of the point of application of the force along the action line of the force, the moment about point O would remain unchanged. And therefore, the rotational effect of the force would remain unchanged. 2D structures or planar bodies have length and breadth but negligible depth and are subjected to forces contained in the plane of the structure. So, in this figure, we see a flat plate which is in XY plane, and the forces acting on the body are also in the same plane. And therefore, the moment of the forces about a point, say point O, would always be along an axis normal to the plane. That is, the moment vectors would be along the z axis pointing either in positive z or negative z direction. And therefore, in 2D cases, it is sufficient to specify only the magnitude of the moment and the sense of the moment either anti-clockwise or clockwise. For example, if in this figure, if the force F is of 10 Newton's magnitude and the perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of the force is 1 meter, then the magnitude of the moment is Fd, that is 10 Newton meters. And if you look from the top, the sense of the moment would be clockwise because this force F try to rotate the object in clockwise direction. Therefore, it is sufficient to specify the magnitude and the sense of the moment. When we have to add several moments which are along the same axis, we have to assign positive or negative signs to the moments depending on whether they are in anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction and the convention is to assign a positive sign to anti-clockwise moment and negative sign to 
clockwise moment, but there is no hard and fast rule and you may decide your own sign convention. Principle of moments or Varignon's theorem is an extremely important principle and what it says is that the moment of a force is equal to the algebraic sum of the moments of the components of that force. Why is it important? The reason is that it is more convenient to determine the moment of a force from the moment sum of its rectangular components rather than from the force itself. So, here in this example, we have a force which is in xy plane and if we wish to find the moment of this force about point O, we shall have to first determine the perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of the force like this. This is the line of action of the force and this is the perpendicular distance D and then we would be able to compute the product FD to determine the magnitude of the moment. But very often finding the perpendicular distance D is extremely difficult and therefore finding the moment directly from the force is quite a tedious task. However, it is easier to compute the moment of the force F from its components. In this diagram you see this force F has been split into its horizontal and vertical components Fx and Fy. The line of action of the horizontal component is this and the moment arm for this component is the distance Ry. Similarly, the line of action of the vertical component is this line and the moment arm for the vertical component is the distance Rx. So, if we consider anti-clockwise moment as positive, then Rx Fy is the moment of the vertical component of the force about point O and since it is in anti-clockwise direction, it would be positive. The moment of the horizontal component Fx would be Ry times Fx and it will be in clockwise direction, therefore the minus sign. But a word of caution, one should not use this equation blindly because if we have another situation where the force is in the first quadrant itself, but its direction is such that Fx points in plus x direction, but Fy points in minus y direction. And in this situation, the moment of both the components would be in clockwise direction. Fy would have moment in clockwise direction, Fx2 would have a moment in clockwise direction, and therefore. MO with the sign convention of anti clockwise moment as positive would be minus Rx Fy minus Ry Fx. So, we should determine the sense of the moment by observing the rotational effect of each of the force component about the given point. We can also resolve the force F in parallel and perpendicular component. When we say parallel, we mean parallel to the position vector from O. The parallel component does not contribute to any moment because the component passes through point O and the moment arm for perpendicular component would be R itself. So, having covered these basic concepts, now let us work out a problem. In this problem, we have to find moment of the force F of magnitude 450 Newton about points A, B, C and D. In order to find moment of this force about point A, we shall have to first determine the perpendicular distance from this point to the line of action of the force and finding this distance would be quite a tedious task. A similar exercise will have to be done for other points too and therefore, it appears that finding the moment directly from the force would be quite a tedious task. Instead determining it 
from its components would be a better method. So, we shall first determine the horizontal and vertical components of this force and in order to do so, we shall have to first find out the slope of the force. From the grid, we can see that the distance Q O is 3 meters and P O is 4 meters. Therefore, the slope of this line of action of the force is 3 over 4 and therefore, the horizontal component of the force F x would be F times 4 upon 5 and the vertical component F y would be F times 3 upon 5. So, we draw the two components and work out the magnitude of the components. The horizontal component would work out to 360 Newton and the vertical component would work out to 270 Newton. Having found the magnitude of the two components, we still find that finding the perpendicular distance from point A to the lines of action of the components would be quite difficult and therefore, a smarter move would be to move the force along its line of action to point Q so that the horizontal component then would pass through A like this. The magnitude of the two components remain the same as what we have computed. Now, F x the horizontal component would pass through point A and would cause zero moment about point A. The vertical component F y would produce a anti clockwise moment about point A and the moment arm for this component would be 5 meters and therefore, moment about point A would be equal to 270 times 5 meters which is 1350 Newton meter in anti clockwise direction. We also notice that the vertical component F y passes through point B and therefore, would not cause any moment about point B. The horizontal component F x would produce clockwise moment about point B and the moment arm for this component would be 6 meters. Therefore, the moment about point B would be equal to 360 times 6 which is 2160 Newton meter in clockwise direction. In order to determine moment about point C, we should shift the point of application of the force to point P so that the horizontal component then passes through C. It would look like this. F x will cause no moment about point C and F y the vertical component would have a clockwise moment about point C and the moment arm would be 5 meters. Therefore, the magnitude of the moment about point C would be equal to 270 times 5 that is 1350 Newton meter in clockwise direction. Now, in order to determine moment of the force about point D, we will have to sum up the moments due to its components. The horizontal component F x would cause clockwise moment about point D and the vertical component F y would produce anti clockwise moment. The moment arm for the vertical component would be 1 meter and that for the horizontal component would be 3 meters. So, moment about point D and we should first decide the sign convention which is anti clockwise is positive. So, since the vertical component produces anti clockwise moment, the first term would be 270 times 1, the horizontal component produces clockwise moment and the moment arm for that component is 3 meters. Therefore, we have the term minus 360 times 3 and this will work out to minus 810 Newton meter which is same as 810 Newton meter in clockwise direction. These are the four moments of the force F about points A, B, C and D and what we learned from this exercise is that it is much easier to find moment of a force from its components by carrying out algebraic sum of the moments of its components rather than directly from the force itself. So, that is it. Thank you for watching 
and see you in the next video